and it has a flyer in it, has a gospel track, and I'm not sure if it has uh, anything else in the packet, but uh, anyway, we just try to go out and hang those on the door. Uh, doors try to get about 100, 100 to 200 of those out if we can uh, in uh, an hour or so. So just trying to let folks in the community know uh, what's happening here at the church. But the rest of the things you can pay attention to there in your bulletin, you can uh, read that about some upcoming dates and some things uh, that are happening here uh, in the nearby future. But let's all stand right now. Let's welcome one another to our service, and then we'll prepare for our Sunday night.
Lord, I was going to ask you where that was found when he got done if he didn't tell you that, since you already heard it. See if you was paying attention. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest have fallen on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, referring to the flood, with fear and trembling, and the sin of the servant of our eyes unto Christ. Not with thy service, as men pleasure, but as the servants of Christ, and the Lord of God from the power. With good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man do with the same change you receive, and know that they be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same thing. us to bring our burdens and requests. 
Anybody else? I want to give you plenty of opportunity. Go ahead, Rodney. Just a simple one. Pray without ceasing. Yeah, pray without ceasing. Where's that found? First. First. In the Bible, that's right. <laughs> First Thessalonians. <laughs> you got it? First Thessalonians 517. 517, that's right. Good. Very good. I'm just very thankful that the Lord protected you on that day with that baseball because um, no, I'm serious because my, my former youth pastor um, who I had for years growing up he took over a church um, it was after we got married I think but the pastor that he took over for had been hit by a softball and killed and so he was taken over for that pastor and you know that really hurt the church and I'm just thankful that God didn't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say this about Scott. Even though he threw the baseball, <laughs> I don't think it was Scott's fault. I think somebody was supposed to catch the ball and missed it. And, uh, but, you know, all that stuff happens for a reason, and we don't always know what it is. But uh, safety is of the Lord, and... I was talking when I went to the dentist. One of the uh, I went up there Wednesday to get everything double checked and everything looked fine. And, uh, but somebody commented and said, "You know, you're pretty fortunate it didn't hit up here, yeah. you know, in the temple, because that was that was the direction I was facing. So it just caught me there. But you know, God's got all that under control. And if something like that would have happened, you know, God would have had a plan and purpose for it. So we just have to commit our lives to Him and just lean upon Him and trust Him. So those are good. Anybody else? Yes, Steve. I'm just thankful for my salvation and preacher John following me around for a few months and figuring out what I was doing wrong and preaching on every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> for that. Yep. But I, I'm very thankful for my salvation. Amen. Well, let me ask you this. How many people here in the church tonight were saved under preacher John's ministry while he was here? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Praise the Lord. You know, when Preacher John called me and, you know, we were talking about coming up here and, and then I found out how he was uh, checking into my background. I mean, I gave him every name I could think of, you know, my former churches and all that stuff. And I thought, man, there's some special people there at Catherine, you know, have a pastor like that that loves them. So you guys are blessed, I'll tell you that for sure. So anybody else? I see a hand up here. Did you have your hand up here? I'd like to stand and thank the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, for my salvation. Thank for, for this church, for John and the my years here before. And a special prayer request. I do see my neurologist this Wednesday. Hopefully he'll be able to release me where I can drive again. God's been good. Six months has gone by rather quickly. Mm -hmm. And again, thanks to everyone that's been helping bring the church and taking wherever necessary. But, uh, it's amazing what God can do. Yep. He still is in the healing power, and of course, most of all, for the healing of the soul. That's right. Amen. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So pray for Harry, and pray everything go well uh, this Wednesday with his tests and stuff. And, and pray for us, too. I just thought that pray for us while we're traveling. Uh, uh, Preacher Dan will be here Wednesday night preaching, and uh, we'll be traveling Tuesday. Going back really probably late Friday. I don't know when uh, Andrew officially has to be there at the base in Georgia, but we'll just... When we get there, we'll drop him off, get everything settled there, and then we'll be heading back after that. So uh, it's pray we'll watch out for us on the highways. Uh, anybody else? And him. Yes. And him while he's in the service. Yes. Yeah, pray for him. For him right? Yeah, he needs, uh, he's actually in his AIT uh, section of training right now, so he's looking forward to it. He's had a lot of fun. He didn't have much fun this past week. He told me, I said, so what did you do this past week? He said, well, uh, he said Tuesday. <laughs> I sat on the concrete, and for 13 hours, I cleaned my rifle. Well, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I said, he goes, and in the three days, I, it spent 30 hours cleaning my rifle. <laughs> and I said, you know, did you hang upside down, blindfolded, and you know, clean your gun, you know, all that stuff? And he said, no, that would have been actually more interesting. But uh, that's just one of those things. Those of you who've been through basic training know that's part, part of what stuff you have to deal with. And he's looking forward to getting, uh, be able to go to church after he's there three weeks he'll be able to uh, be off the base on the weekend so he's hoping he has to go off the base with somebody so he's hoping to find somebody that can go to church with him 
And uh, so be in prayer about that because uh, it's tough, you know. Uh, he hasn't had his Bible this whole time, um, so he's looking forward to getting his Bible. And, and uh, you yeah, know, it's those things are tough. It's difficult. So anyway, anybody else? Word of testimony, answer to prayer, favorite verse you'd like to get. Yes, just. I just want to say I'm thankful for this church and all the many things that they've been there for us through and for my kids as they've grown up. And there's been many times that we've needed you all, and I'm, I'm thankful for all the times that everybody's been there for us. Yeah. Amen. People don't realize how important a church is, you know, church family. And uh, you're definitely needed. You might not feel like you do a big part sometimes, but we're all needed. And it's going to come a time where you're going to need the church. But there's going to come a time, too, where someone's going to need you. And it's just the way it is. Uh, so thankful. Anybody else? Yes, Doug. I've been leading an EMS support group for like 35 plus years. And uh, we're going to get to have a meeting at the end of this month. Hmm. First time in about three years. And we get excited about it. Yeah. And they're my family, too. That's right. Yeah, we're going yeah, it's been a while since COVID and all that stuff hit. Anybody else? All right, we'll take, oh, I'm sorry, don't take your Bibles yet. We got special, all right? <coughs> then we'll take our Bibles. So the men will come up.
page. Take your Bibles and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. There are two chapters in the Bible that gives uh, great detail when it comes to the rapture of the church. And 1 Corinthians 15 is one, and 1 Thessalonians 4 is another. Uh, that's not going to be the message, but just something that you ought to know and ought to be aware of. But we're going to be looking here at, at a little phrase we find at the beginning of the chapter in 1 Corinthians 15. We'll start reading in verse number 9. And Paul talking here to the church of Corinth, and you have to remember this church of Corinth, uh, they had a lot of problems. And Paul was uh, instructing them, trying to get get them to straighten some things out, but also trying to be an encouragement to them. And he starts here in verse 9, and he says, For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I... But the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. And that little phrase there in verse number 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. We want to preach to you tonight about the grace of God. And you know, without the grace of God, uh, the grace of God does a lot of things for the believer. And we're going to look at some of that tonight. But we need to realize that. Uh, the Bible talks about us being co-laborers together with God. And the only reason we can do that is but by the grace of God. Well, let's pray and we'll get into the message. Our Father, we thank you for the word of God and I pray. Uh, thank you so much for the testimonies. Thank you, Lord, for the answers to prayer. Uh, we do pray, Lord, for uh, just a special request. I think of those who cannot be here even because of sickness. Uh, pray, Lord, that you help them continue to get well. Uh, I do pray for uh, just safety on, on the highways for uh, Dylan's, and I just pray that you will watch over them, and I pray everything go well there uh, with Jaden. I pray for Harry's uh, upcoming uh, tests and things that are going to be done here Wednesday, and pray that he'll get a good report. And uh, Lord, so many other things going on, and, and, uh, and the health needs that we have, and those uh, in our church family. But Lord, we want to just take a few minutes here as we hear the preaching of your word. We pray that you might anoint our ears, that we can hear from heaven tonight, that we might be encouraged, we might be challenged by the word of God. But Lord, if there's one here in our service that is not sure of heaven is their home, Lord, I pray that you might even use this message to speak to them and uh, Lord, deliver them from the power of darkness and bring them into the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. And Father, we just pray and ask these things now and pray that you will guide and direct our time together. In Christ's name we ask him. Amen. Amen. Well, here in this little phrase, in verse number 10, it says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. That word, but's an interesting word. It's actually a transitional word, but it indicates there is a radical change of direction. When you got saved, when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you had a radical change of direction. Now, there may not have been a lot of radical changes on the outside, but there was a radical change on the inside. You see, the Bible says old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. We become a new creation in Christ Jesus. We have new desires. We desire to know the truth. We desire to know Jesus Christ. We desire to know more about him. We desire to be obedient. We desire the fellowship of other believers. We desire the peace that's in our heart. There's a radical change of direction in the life. Someone has said that the Christian life is a changed life, and it certainly is, but I think the Christian life is also an exchanged life. There are things we are to put off, and there are also some things we are to put on. We are to exchange some things of the world to some things of God, and it is also the exchanged life. And the one thing that makes the exchange possible and what makes the change possible is all the grace of God. Verse 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul had told us in another place that, uh, that God will never leave us nor forsake us. 
He mentioned also in another place, faithful is he, speaking of God, faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. You see, the grace of God does a lot of things for us. And we're going to look at three of these things here tonight just very quickly. I'm only going to have you turn maybe to a couple places and that'll be it. And some of these uh, scriptures I'll have you turn to you're very familiar with already. But the first of all, let's look here at saving grace. You know, saving grace is a one-time event. And I'm talking about saving somebody from their sins. You don't have to get saved and then you lose your salvation and have to get saved again. And then you lose your salvation and get saved again. Jesus Christ never said you must be born again, 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 again. He just said you must be born again. You must have a spiritual birth. My physical birth happened. It was only a one-time event. My mom saying amen to that. You know? <laughs> I was a, a nine, over a nine-pound baby, and, and uh, my sister was as well. And I'm sure my mom was thankful that only happened one time. And, but our spiritual birth is the same thing. It's a one-time event. And you ought to remember something about that one-time event. You may not remember all the details, but you ought to remember maybe where you were. You may not remember the day and the hour. You may not remember uh, the exact uh, period of time it was. I know about where I was. I know I was in a vacation Bible school. I know I was about the age of six years old. And it was sometime in the summer. I have no idea when. But I know exactly where I was. Matter of fact, it was about four or five years ago. I went back to that Methodist church and I asked if I could take a little tour because that was the church we grew up in. And uh, I went down to the very place. And, and matter of fact, I was walking around with somebody there from the church. I don't think it was the, the pastor, but it was uh, somebody there in upper in the church. And, and I was talking to him and I was telling my testimony about how I got saved. And I went down into the basement and took him right to the very spot. I said, this was it right here. What a glorious thing it is to experience the saving grace of our God. Amen. And saving grace is an amazing thing. Paul was changed by this same saving grace. He says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Paul was changed from an abject sinner to an absolute saint. And you know you're a saint here. If you're a born-again believer, you're a saint before God. Now, you may not live like a saint, and your spouse may not think you're a saint, but you're still a saint nonetheless. We are all saints before God. That doesn't mean we're perfect. That doesn't mean we're without sin. That just means when God looks at us, we have a right standing with God because all he sees is the blood of Jesus Christ. Aren't you thankful for the saving grace of God? Someone has defined grace as God's riches at Christ's expense. If you take the letters G-R-A-C-E, it's God's riches at Christ's expense. I think that's a pretty good definition. But grace is something that is given to us that we don't earn. You see, some people say, well, that's what mercy is. No, that's not what mercy is. Mercy is when you don't get something that you deserve. You deserve God's wrath. I deserve God's wrath, and he doesn't give it to us. That is mercy. But grace is when he gives you something, and you didn't do anything to get anything to earn it, anything to uh, get his favor. That's grace. It's freely given, and it has to be freely received. So grace is just simply, uh, it says there in Ephesians, go ahead and turn with me to the book of Ephesians, and we might be back here in just a second. But Ephesians chapter 2, very familiar verses here about God's saving grace. He says in Ephesians 2 and verse number 8, he starts off back in verse 1 to talk about uh, being quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That describes you and me. Before we got saved, we were dead, spiritually dead before God. Uh, we're made of three things. We're made of body, soul, and spirit. Your body is what everybody physically sees. This is my body. But your soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. It's actually who you are as a person. Your body is not who you are as a person. That is your soul. Because if something happened and I lost an arm and I lost a leg or I lost something else... You know, I'm still, I still have a soul. I'm still me on the inside. You see, that's our soul. But our spirit is that part of us that actually gets saved. It was dead in trespasses and sins. And then when God quickened us and made us alive, our spirit is what came alive. And whenever we uh, die and leave this earth, it is our spirit and soul that immediately goes into the presence of God. Our body 
body, the shell of our body, just laying here in the earth and waiting for the rapture of the church. And when the church is raptured, that body is changed into a glorified body, and there will be a grand reunion with our body, with our soul and spirit that is in heaven. But it says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What Paul is saying here is that the saving grace that we're talking about, this one-time event, is something that you cannot earn. You cannot work for it. It is something God gave to us. And Paul said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Since you're in Ephesians chapter 2, look back in chapter 1 and verse number 7. He says in chapter 1, verse number 7, in whom we have redemption, he's speaking of Jesus Christ, Actually, I'll back up to verse 6. He says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. Aren't you thankful for the saving grace of God tonight? Amen. Paul went from persecuting Christ to preaching Christ. All because of God's saving grace. Many of you know the, the great hymn, Amazing Grace. And, of course, the song starts off, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. That hymn was written by a man by the name of John Newton. When John Newton was 82 years old and he could no longer see uh, to read, he heard someone read the first part of, of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. And again it says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. He remained silent for a short time, and then he said this. He said, I am not what I ought to be. Ah, oh, how imperfect and deficient. I am not what I might be, considering my privileges and opportunities. I am not what I wish to be. God, who knows my heart, knows I wish to be more like him. I am not what I hope to be. Before long, I will die, and I will be with him. Yet, I am not what I once was, a child of sin and slave of the devil. Though, no, so, though to all of these, not what I ought to be, not what I might be, not what I wish or hope to be, and not what I once was, I think I can truly say with the apostle, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. Later on, he was also known as saying this. He said, my memory is nearly gone, but I remember two things for sure. He said, I remember that I am a great sinner. And I remember that Christ is a great Savior. Amen. Amazing grace. That's the saving grace of God. And then Paul here also, this, when we think about this grace, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. We have to consider the sanctifying grace. Sanctifying grace is something that ought to happen in a believer's life. And it ought to be daily happening to every believer. Sanctifying grace is something uh, that happens as we grow in the Lord. The word sanctify means actually to set apart or even to cleanse. And that's what sanctifying grace does. It sets us apart from the world and cleanses us within. And as we grow in God's wonderful grace. 2 Peter 3.18 says, but grow in grace. You see, you can get more grace than you have. You have to grow in that grace. And it's something that God gives to us freely. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hey, turn, if you would, with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. We see the saving grace of God, but now we see the sanctifying grace of God as we are to grow in this grace. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 5. This is why you'll hear, you'll hear me <laughs> preach this. You'll hear other preachers preach the importance of getting in God's Word. And you'll hear us preach the importance of getting a regular time in prayer. 
These things are necessary in the believer's life. This is all part of our sanctifying grace. This sanctifying grace is something God gives to us to help us to be more like our Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 5 says, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. What he's saying here is after we are saved, we have some things to add to our faith. Not to get more saved. We add to our faith so that we can grow in this marvelous grace, this sanctifying grace that God has for us. Second Peter uh, chapter 1 and verse 2, if you go back up there uh, to the top of the chapter, he says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. So again, the more we learn about the knowledge of God, the more grace and peace that will be multiplied to us. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9, Paul said this as he was talking to the Lord. Uh, actually, the Lord said this to Paul. He says the Paul had this thorn in the flesh, and uh, many people think it was his eyesight. Other people may have some other uh, theories about it, but it doesn't really matter. Paul prayed three times for this thorn to be removed. And God told him no each time. And finally, Christ said this to Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. You see, God's grace is sufficient for us, not just to save us, but his grace is sufficient for us to help us deal with everything in life so we can have this sanctifying grace so we can grow in the knowledge of our Lord, so we can learn to be more like Him. We can handle, as I mentioned this morning, the times of trials and sufferings that we might be faced with. God gives us this wonderful, sanctifying grace. But something else that we see here back in 1 Corinthians 15, when Paul says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. There's another grace that's just as important in the Christian life. Saving grace is probably primary because without that saving grace, we would all be in hell. God gave us that wonderful saving grace. And then that sanctifying grace helps us to grow in the Christian life to be more like him. But there's another grace that is just as important in the Christian life, and that is serving grace. I mentioned in the verses there uh, early on, faith was he that calleth you, who also will do it. I don't know of an individual who has ever served God, and I know of some who thought, boy, God is lucky to have me. <laughs> I know some like that, and God really wasn't all that fortunate to get them. Because God didn't have them. They had themselves. But the individuals who just said, Lord, I'm not worthy. I know me. I know my likes and dislikes. And I am not worthy to serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I don't know what it is you'd have me to do. But I'm willing to do whatever it is you want me to do. And then the Holy Spirit of God speaks to us as only he can in that still small voice. And says, you know what? I think I would want you to do this. And guess what we do? We say, oh, that sounds good. Now, we start arguing with God. God, you've got the wrong person. I don't want to do that. I don't like to do that. I can't do that. I'm not qualified to do that. But faith was he that called you. Amen. Who also will do it. Amen. You see, it's not you, but it's the grace of God working through you that will do it. God gives us that serving Grace. All he's looking for is somebody to say, here I am, Lord, <coughs> send me. And then God gives us that wonderful grace and sends us along on our merry way. He equips us. He helps us to grow. He helps us do all the things that we need to do to be able to serve him in the capacity that he wants us to serve him in. Back in Ephesians chapter 2, we saw verse 8 and 9. But there's a verse we often don't quote with that passage. When we think about the serving grace of God, 
We see the saving grace in verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But verse 10 is very important. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. You see, that is part of our, our serving grace. Over in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 8, here's what Paul said later on. He said, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. <laughs> what a privilege Amen. it is to be able to sweep out a church, to be able to clean the toilets, in the church, I heard, uh, I don't remember who it was that I heard this about the other day. Oh, I know who it was. My sister was telling me this. Uh, the assistant pastor up at Ripley Baptist Temple, uh, his wife, uh, Grant Garber's wife, Rachel Garber, she cleans the church up there. And there was a lady who came by. One day she was there cleaning the church. And the lady you know, got to talking with her. And she's like, is there someone here I can talk to? And she goes, well, she goes, I can find somebody for you. I can get somebody. She goes, but I'm just here cleaning the church. And that lady was just, you get to clean the church? This is such an honor. Now, Rachel said at that time, she goes, I never really considered it much of an honor. <laughs> she said, but it really changed my thinking. What a privilege it is. To serve the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. It doesn't matter what capacity it is. Because we are all co-laborers together with God. We are like working together as a, should be as a well-oiled, fine-tuned machine to accomplish God's work in this world. But the only thing that makes it possible for us to do it is the grace of God. His serving grace. You see, He equips us. Every year we have cold wars. Cold wars is getting ready to come up here in a few months. And uh, there's a lot of things that happen during cold wars. We need a lot of laborers in cold wars. Sometimes we have to move people around and shuffle people into different positions. And that's okay. Now, if somebody gets bent out of shape and say, well, my job was this here last year, you know what you're probably missing? You're probably missing the fact that you need the grace of God. Because if God wants you in a different position and he puts it on maybe Beth's heart or somebody else's heart, my heart, and says, hey, we need this person over here. Trust me, there's a reason, there's a purpose for it. You may not know what it is, but every single one of us ought to simply say, Lord, here I am. I'm just a vessel wherever you want to put me. I just want to serve you in whatever capacity. It doesn't matter. And we can thank him for what God accomplishes. Because honestly, every year as we see young people get saved and, and we see other results that come about and we've seen families come into the church and, and other things that happen, it is only because of the grace of God. Right. You know, Preacher John started, uh, they started Cold Wars years ago, I think about six, seven years before I got here. And then we've continued on. And, and I'm just going to tell you, and I tell our church this all the time, when we get closer and closer and closer, we're just along for the ride. We have no idea where God wants to take this thing and what he wants to do with it. God can shut it down anytime he wants, and God can take it to a whole other level if he wants. What we need to do is we just need to simply be obedient to him. Because what we do know is what the Bible tells us. The fields are white unto harvest. Mm -hmm. There are people everywhere that needs to hear the truth of the gospel. There are people, yes, in other churches. But in some of those churches, they're not hearing what we're hearing in here. They're not hearing what they're hearing in some of the other churches around our community. About Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. And you better put your faith and trust in him or you're not going to make it. They don't hear those type of things, and that's what they need to hear, but it's only because of the grace of God that we are able to preach what he has given us to preach, right. that we are able to serve and do what he has given us to do in serving him. 2 Timothy 1.9 says, Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Paul went from persecuting Jesus Christ to preaching Jesus Christ. 
You know why? It was the grace of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Saving grace, sanctifying grace to help you grow. Many of you, as you start reading your Bibles and you're trying to understand the Bible, and you, you start getting discouraged because you're just not getting some of those things. That's okay. It is God's grace that will give you what you need when you need it. That is sanctifying grace. And as you continue to learn God and learn about Him, He will give you grace to serve Him. You don't have to wait until you have the entire Bible memorized before you can serve God. Right. Serving in the capacity you have right now. Be faithful right now. And God will use you throughout your life. It is all the grace of God. That's right. We have a lot to be thankful for as believers. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you need to accept that grace. You need to get saved because we are saved by grace through faith. God is reaching out to you right now. He is, he is calling you to himself, but you have to respond. You know, in every one of these situations, we all have to respond. Even as a believer, the sanctifying grace, the serving grace, we have to respond. But it's the grace that God gives us. We're just co-labors together with him. So let's all stand. We'll have a word of prayer. Whatever your need is here tonight, if you need to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you to do that. Do not wait for a convenient season because that convenient season will never come. It will never come. There's no better time than right now. Trust him right now. And Christian, if you've been waiting to do something for the Lord, you've been waiting to step out, or whatever it is God wants you to do, he's been working hard, there's no better time like the present. Just receive his wonderful grace. Father, we thank you so much for your blessings. And Lord, I pray that you help us do business with you right now. And Lord, I think we can truly say from our hearts, those of us who are saved, we can, we can thank you just as much as we can about that saving grace. Lord, we know the wretched state we were in. And we're thankful, Lord, you called us, that you sought us, that you pursued us to bring us to Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray for whether there's a young believer, and I say young, spiritually young, not in age young, but those who maybe have just been newly saved, or maybe those who have been saved for a while, but they've never quite grown the way they should. Lord, I pray that they might understand and receive the sanctifying grace to help them to grow, that they might do their part and get in the word of God, that they might seek you in prayer and allow your sanctifying grace to do a work in them that they just never could understand before and they never thought possible. And then, Lord, for all of us as believers, I pray that we might receive the serving grace where you call us to do something. It's not our skills and abilities. But, Lord, it's your grace working through us to get the job done. Father, whatever it is, we just pray that you have your will accomplished now in the invitation time. And, Lord, I pray if there be one here that has never trusted you as their Savior, that right now you might speak to them and let them know they need to pray and accept you as Lord and Savior. So with their heads bowed and eyes closed, let me just simply ask you the question. This message was more for believers, but if you do not know Christ as your Savior, you know about him, but you cannot remember that time when you have asked him to save you. We want to give you that time right now. It's good to just nail that thing down and get it settled. Quit wrestling with it. How many of you say, preacher, I'm just not really sure heaven's my home. But I do care enough about my soul. I just like, I'd like some help with that. I'd help you right now, right where you're standing. I wouldn't call you out or embarrass you. I wouldn't have to come to you, but I would love to help you. How many of you say, preacher, I'm just not sure heaven's my home. Would you pray for me? Anybody like that? Lift your hand up real high so I can see it. I'm looking around. God's speaking to your heart. He knows exactly who you are. The reason that you're feeling uncomfortable and can't rest is because God's dealing with you. He's lovingly drawing you to himself, but you have to respond. Anybody like that? Raise your hand real high. Say, yes, preacher, I, I know I need to be saved. That's me. Okay, Christian, let me ask you a question. How many of you say, preacher, I know... I haven't really quite understood this sanctifying grace, and I haven't quite understood this serving grace, but I know this, I can't do it without God's help. That's what we're talking about. 
How many say, preacher, would you pray for me? Because I acknowledge right now before God, I need his help. I need his help to grow. I need his help to become stronger as a believer. I see those hands. Anybody else? Hands all over the place. Yes. God help us to grow in that marvelous grace that he's given to us. Father, bless us this invitation time now. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 388. 388. As we sing a few verses here of a song of invitation, this is your time to respond. Step out where you are and just do business with the Lord. Have my own way, Lord, have my own way. Thou art the Father, I am the clay. Hold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. salvation and so they would like to unite here so all in favor in receiving Daniel and Morgan into uh, Catholic Baptist Church would you indicate that by saying amen, amen. 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 And any opposed same sign and I've never had anybody opposed I'm glad <laughs> for that because uh, we try to be thorough checking people out I tell people all the time you know if they come and there there's a lot of issues and problems coming from another church uh, you know, you want to make sure things are settled uh, at another church before coming. Otherwise, you're just taking your baggage from one place to another, and that doesn't please the Lord. But I'm thankful everybody we've had come here to the church, and you know, God's dealt with that stuff already. They've clean hearts, uh, good testimonies, and just excited to receive them in here to the body, uh, this fellowship of believers. So I'm going to ask them if they would here in just a second when we pray, make your way back to the back. And if you all would, extend the right hand of fellowship to them. And I'm excited for them and what God's going to do in their lives. And I'm going to ask John if he'd mind. It's good having you all here in the service again and, and preach to John this Sunday. But would you mind closing us in a word of prayer, John? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for this day, Lord, for the many blessings you have given us, God, and for our salvation, God. For your grace, Lord, for us. Encouragement it is, God, to hear how your grace is at work in each and every life, in each and every Christian, God. I pray, Lord, that you will continue to use this church, God, that you will be a lighthouse in this community. God, that we'll reach families for you. I pray, God, that you'll guide us and lead us throughout the rest of this week. Give us a good week for the In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.